Hello, my name is June Lee. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists working out of University Hospitals in Cleveland. First, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to allow me to participate in Cardiovascular Innovations Digital 2020. Today, we will be presenting a case of stent thrombosis and endovascular complications. These are my disclosures. This is a 68-year-old man with coronary disease, carotid disease, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and a right FEMPOP bypass performed in 2017. He presented with acute limb ischemia in March of 2019 owing to an occluded FEMPOP bypass. As you can see on his medications, his heart rate and blood pressure are relatively well controlled. His diagnostic angiogram showed severe disease in the common iliac artery, moderate disease in the external iliac artery, and a total occlusion in the proximal SFA. The FEMPOP bypass is also occluded, as you can see here. There's reconstitution in the popliteal P2 segment. We first predilated the common iliac artery lesion and advanced the sheath into the common femoral artery. We engaged the proximal cap of the SFA with a Navicross and stiff angle glide wire. We were able to traverse the majority of the occlusion in a loose wire fashion until the transition between the SFA and popliteal artery, where we met significant uh, calcium, in, as you can see here in the second panel. Thus, we performed retrograde access. With injections, the only vessel we can see was the peroneal artery, so retrograde access into the peroneal was obtained. Here you can see glide gold wire being advanced with the CXI retrograde. In the second panel, you can see that the glide gold is finding its way into the bypass graft itself. We ended up upgrading to a 035 system. A stiff angle glide wire and navy cross were placed. Here in the third panel, you can see we are crossing into the native SFA retrograde. And in the fourth panel, you can see our wire is being snared and extracted for externalization. We then perform predilation with a 5.0 balloon followed by two drug coated balloons in the SFA popliteal area. After a drug coated balloon, you can see here there's a dissection plane in the proximal and osteal SFA as well as in the SFA popliteal transition at the area of the prior bypass touchdown. In the P3 segment into the TP trunk, you can see there is still residual disease as well. We ended up placing a supera stent into the distal SFA into popliteal territory as well as a drug eluding stent to cover the osteum of the SFA to maintain patency proximally. We performed angioplasty of the peroneal artery. Uh, concomitantly, we were able to remove the retrograde sheath with angioplasty for hemostasis. And then we performed two self-expanding stents into the iliac arteries, into the external and common iliac arteries. Here are our completion angiograms. As you can see here, the iliacs are widely patent. The osteum of the SFA is covered with some mild protrusion into the common femoral artery to secure the inflow. The popliteal distal SFA supera stent is nicely expanded and we have good runoff into the peroneal artery. This is an ABI and TBI on post-procedure day one. As you can see here, we have excellent flow into the right leg. However, about 20 days later, he presented with recurrent acute limb ischemia of the right leg. Suddenly, he had developed coldness, dusky coloring, and numbness of the right lower extremity, but did have preserved motion. We did have a TTE from his previous hospitalization, which did not show any evidence of LV thrombus or PFO. He did also endorse compliance with his medications, including the aspirin and Plavix. So when we took him to the cath lab, this was our diagnostic angiogram. 
you can see here in the first panel, the iliac stents are still patent. In the second panel, the common femoral is actually occluded just proximal to where our DES had landed. The remainder of the SFA is also occluded, as is the partially the profunda artery. There is reconstitution again in the P2 segment, very similar to his index presentation. We place the intervention sheath and cross the occlusion using a stiff angle glide wire and navy cross. This first video is hastened in the interest of time. We confirm true lumen access distally with selective injection into the popliteal artery. Here you can actually appreciate that the PT, which was previously hibernating, has now actually increased in flow. We performed angiojet thrombectomy using the Solent Omni catheter. And here you can see even after the thrombectomy, there was still a significant amount of thrombus within the common femoral artery. We then performed balloon angioplasty of the entire common femoral, SFA, and popliteal artery. We did note ongoing significant thrombus in the common femoral artery, necessitating placement of an overlapping drug eluding stent. We performed post dilation using an 8 O uh, balloon overlapping into the external iliac. Here you can see on our completion angiogram, the stent is nicely expanded. There is only mild residual thrombus noted in the external iliac artery. The SFA and popliteal artery expanded nicely with a thrombectomy and angioplasty alone. I did end up placing an additional drug coat of balloon into the PP trunk. Here you can see in the fourth panel, there was still some residual stenosis in the PP trunk. The fifth panel shows the nice expansion uh, achieved after the DCV. After this second procedure, I did place the patient on Plavix and Foldose Eliquis as my uh, anticoagulation therapy in an effort to prevent recurrent stent thrombosis. The patient had continued to do well. This is his ADI TBI at one year follow up. You can see here the right leg is maintained at 0.97 is the ABI and TBI of 0.52. At this point, I decided to place him on Plavix monotherapy and stop the Eliquis. So the teaching point of this case is, first, don't be cute. If the osteum of the SFA is compromised, it's okay to cover the profunda. The common femoral artery is oftentimes what we think of as the left main equivalent of the leg. Failure here will certainly lead to recurrent instant restenosis and at its worst, stent thrombosis. I suspected in this case the reason why he actually had stent thrombosis was not because we covered inadequately into the common femoral artery. I believe the clot actually propagated further from his failed bypass, compromising the common femoral artery. The question then uh, for him was whether or not an upfront role of DOAC would have been useful. Uh, and now with the Voyager data, perhaps the addition of Xerauto 2.5 BID uh, at the time of the index procedure would have prevented the second uh, acute limb episode. So in very selective patients, it may be considered uh, to use the Xerauto 2.5 BID as a augmentative therapy to Plavix 75 daily in the first few months. Thank you for your attention and please stay safe out there.